You are now listening to Cyber Time Bite, hosted by me, Stephen Clark. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey there, everybody. Hi. <laughs> you you already know how it is. This is episode ninety four of Cyber Woo! Time Bite. <laughs> 94 Six episodes. Six away from 100. I can't... I, I honestly can't believe I'm this far. It is crazy. I believe in you. I, I know. Thank you. <laughs> like, like, why thank you? <laughs> um, so, so, today I am with um, someone I had in the podcast before, and she is coming back because she was that awesome, and she's Pretty awesome of a person. I like talking to this person. <laughs> we are back with Er. We are Arts. Hi, I'm Aaron. <laughs> that too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Also, I... also, do you want to know the reason behind that username? Because I had a reason for it, and I have a way it's supposed to be pronounced. <laughs> Yeah, but before you say your reason, the the way when I first saw it, I thought it was like we are arts. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, definitely don't have a Twitter account with that label. Um, nope. Don't. You do. That's the name. That is your Twitter <laughs> handle. <laughs> um, I have a Twitter handle with that. Uh, you should not look it up if you are a minor. Um. <laughs> Well, she's actually I right. I haven't posted on it in months. Um, <laughs> my Twitter is not safe. But the one I follow? <laughs> if you look at my likes, it's not. <laughs> well, let's look at your likes. Let's do it right now. No! Oh, God. <laughs> let's look at them now. Live on the podcast, right on the spot. Let's do it. <laughs> Oh, dear God, you are going to be disappointed in me, and you will never have me on your podcast again. Um. <laughs> oh, God. I'm, I'm looking at my likes now, and I'm just ashamed. Um, it's just a bunch of I'm... cringy content. <laughs> uh, then again, I just posted some fucked up shit on my TikTok, so. Oh, I swore, I'm sorry. No, 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 it's fine. If you, if you, if you, if you just don't like, 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 it's fine to swear, but just don't like say like the f word like four times over, like, like f f f f f. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get you. But um, about my username, <laughs> I actually had a reason for it. So I came up with it when I was like sixteen, I think, and huge into Tumblr. And also super into Hamilton. I remember that. So, so Hamilton's song. So my last name starts with a B and my first name starts with an E. And in one of the songs, it goes, ER, we are meant to be. And I was like, oh, hey, my first name starts with an ER and my last name starts with a B. I can make this into a username. So that became my Tumblr username. And then from there, I shortened it down to ER We Are Art. And I just haven't rebranded <laughs> since I was like 16. Um, and that's the story of the username. So it's supposed to be ER We Are Art, like separated. That, that, that's, no. re- that's really cool, though, actually, really. And now it makes sense. I just have to explain it, but it makes sense once I explain it. My my username has a has a story too. <laughs> I'm curious. So my so nostalgia vamp isn't original isn't my original username. Like I changed it. My my original username was actually Luigi Steel. <laughs> because because I because I, I made my username um after I made my YouTube channel, because after I, because my YouTube channel is called Mel's like nine nine one, and after oh. and after I made my YouTube channel, I thought like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be known on the internet as Mel's like nine nine one, 
And so, Hell. and so, what happened was is that um, after I uh, got Guitar Hero three for my Nintendo Wii, um, they, they gotta love the Wii. Yeah, the Wii was amazing. <laughs> um, in its time. <laughs> but um, I I got Guitar Hero three. And it had online capabil- capabilities where you could play with your friends online, but then, but then they were asked, but then they need like a they they the first thing they asked you is like you need a username because like, you know so when you go online you, you have your username people can find you by, and and I was like hmm, what is my username going to be? I was thinking about Mel's like nine nine one, but then I was like I gotta be more original than that, and so and so I was so I was like well Luigi's my favorite Mario brother. And my favorite character in Guitar Hero is Axel Steel, and so, and so I just so you so, combined them. Yeah, so I combined them and made Luigi Steel. That's awesome. <laughs> and I and I rolled with that username for a long time, but then and then I got into vampires and I called it Luigi Steel Vamp. <laughs> and then okay, uh, and then when I got older, I got in the st- nostalgia hit me more than ever. And I was like, maybe I should make the username a little bit more to what I am. And so I changed it to Nostalgia Vamp, and here I am. Nice. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, I still have accounts with, like, super old usernames. Um, back when I was super into Reddit, when I was, like, 14, I had Rose Bad Wolf, like, a certain number. I don't really remember what the number is anymore. I had that as my username because Doctor Who, woo. Um, <laughs> and then when I got into t- when I got into fanfiction.net, I made the username Rosebad Wolf One Thousand because I kept putting in numbers, and no matter what it was, it would not approve it. And I was like, I want Rosebad Wolf, so I ended up typing in a thousand, and it worked. So that was my username. And then when I got Tumblr. It was available, so I just made it the same username on my Tumblr, and now that's also my archive of our own username, and yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I um, I, I mean like, I I went I mean like most like nine nine one. I mean I don't really like, like that's the name of my YouTube channel, but like I haven't I don't really like push it that much anymore because like. Because I don't even upload really that much on my personal YouTube page that much anymore. Because I started doing a Homestuck Let's Read. But then but then I was like, ah, this is taking too long. And I don't want to, like, bore everyone by just me sitting in front of my computer, screen capping it, reading Homestuck. I don't think anyone wants to see that. <laughs> so, so I, st- I don't know. I've never read Homestuck. It'd be interesting to watch. No, you should get the... Oh. Oh. Aaron. 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 <laughs> Homestuck, you need, you need this. <laughs> you think you love My Hero Academia. You think you love that. But Homestuck, <laughs> you need this. <laughs> oh, God. How good is Homestuck? If you like crazy, if you like cringe, if you like crazy storylines, if you just like good storytelling... Homestuck's your boy. <laughs> I heard it's super duper long, though. Well, yeah, it is super long, but it's really good. <laughs> uh, energy and time. Eventually, eventually I'll read Homestuck. I mean, who's your, uh, who's your, what's your uh, Zodiac sign? Cancer. You're, oh boy, then Car Cat's your boy. <laughs> then Car Cat's your troll. Wait, is he the one with like the shades? With like the pointy shades? No, he's the he's the one with the with the with the spiky hair. He looks like Ducky with black hair pretty much. Wait, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm in. <laughs> Yami Kumo time! <laughs> Deku with black hair. The prototype of Deku was supposed to remain quirkless, and he had black hair that covered up one of his eyes. 
And yes. <laughs> like, oh, em emo Deku? <laughs> yes, and I love him! <laughs> Oh, it, it was he, he listens to uh, Belly of a Shark from Gallows. He's just like, Don't ever lie! The Belly of a Shark! Emo Deku listens to the front bottoms and ignores reality to be a hero. <laughs> what? Like, Emo Deku. Wait, Emo Deku, like, re uh, denies reality? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I don't. I don't, I don't know. Don't, I'm on a tangent. I had coffee and anxiety meds and I'm going. <laughs> no, it's fine. But it's just, like, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Emo Deku is a thing that exists and I want to cosplay him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, I, I saw that you, no, I saw, uh, speaking of that, I saw on your, on your Twitter page, like you're saying, like, Oh, I just like like I just want to be a a like I want to dress like an emo punk and be cool and whatever. Just like what? That is my aesthetic goals, and I want it to happen. I have been practicing with eyeliner, and I can finally do it. And I'm I'm gonna go put on eyeliner now. <laughs> if you think I'm joking, I am not. I am going to the bathroom and putting on eyeliner right now. Right now. During the podcast? Yep. <laughs> wow, this is the first ever, buddy. <laughs> I mean, I'm wearing headphones, so, like, uh, I can still talk and... Yeah, I know, but, like, but, like, but, like, wow, man, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am sorry. I am hyper. The coffee's kicking in. And I'm excited because I'm talking to another human being who's not screaming at me. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, like, I'm glad I'm able to make your day by doing this podcast. <laughs> yes, it is so fun. Do, uh, are you on that quick? Uh, how good is the Quick Trick Coffee? Because we know Seven Eleven Coffee sucks. Okay, Quick Trick Coffee is actually really good, but I don't support anyone getting it right now because of things. That are happening in the world right now. If you come to Quick Trip and you get a coffee, we have to make it for you. Like you have to go to an employee and we have to put on our kitchen uniform and get you that coffee. It is annoying and I hate it. <laughs> do you guys have um, Do you guys have soda fountains there? That do you have like a huge soda fountain there with like five hundred flavors of soda? It's not like 500 flavors, it's more like 12, but we do have soda fountains. But again, we have to get it for you. That's super annoying right now. Do you guys have a uh, high C orange? I don't think so. Dang it, that's the best flavor ever. <laughs> I know the McDonald's I used to work at had it for like way longer than we were supposed to. I know they they stuck McDonald's put a law that said no more no more high C orange at McDonald's can't happen now. Yeah. No burger. When I worked at had it for like six months after that because we just had extra. Yeah, because uh, Burger King has it. Round one has it. Uh, Wendy's has it. Wait, Wendy's has it? I thought they had Fanta. No, they have the freestyle machine, and it has it in there. Oh, I haven't been to Wendy's in a while. No, I no, I remember when I went up there to uh, to the Dallas to go to the Dice Show. Um, when when I when I went up there with the Wanna Be Boo Boys, <laughs> um, <laughs> we we stopped at the Burger King across the street from the hotel, and like in and then a little bit later down in the night, we went to the Denny's and we freaking. Uh, he freaking had played D&D &D at four in the morning at the Denny's. Okay, that's just goals. Like, <laughs> when we got to the Dells, we all met up after, like, getting the hotel room all situated. We went to Denny's, and it was amazing. And I was just, I was the only one in the group that dressed up in cosplay. Everyone else was like, yeah, I'm not going to do it. And I was like, you all agreed to do this with me when we went to Denny's, and none of you did, so I'm the only one in cosplay, but at least I'm in cosplay. And then the person that, one of the people working there recognized it as Deku, and I was like, hey, nice. 
Wait, did, did you guys did yeah, but do you that yeah, did you and your group show up on day zero? For Guy Show, yes, we did. Did is that when I met you? Or was it day one that I met you? I forgot what day I met you on. It was either Friday night or Thursday night. I think it was Thursday night because I was coming back from Werewolf. Yeah. Because I set it up near the registration. Yeah. When I know when I first met you, I thought you were. You see, like you seemed like when I was like asking you for your social media, I, I felt kind of awkward because you were like, I felt like you were like feeling it was awkward for me to ask for your social media. I was like, oh, I'm I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Like in my mind, I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> You're fine. I'm just a very awkward person. Um, also, anxiety is a bitch. Um, um, I recently, well, before the whole corona thing, I was seeing a counselor at my school, and woo, I'm actually doing better now. That's really good. So, yeah. So, that's the thing. I- and I, also, I now have eyeliner on. <laughs> like, nice. It, it's it's a thing. It just it's on my face. I um. I'm tr- I'm trying to get good. I'm very bad at makeup. I I don't think I'm going to become the Dice Show again this year because quarantine is a crap, and I had to use all the rest of my vacation time for this, and so I don't think Dice Show for me is happening this year. <laughs> If I go to Die Show this year, it would probably be through work with no games. Yeah, I mean, but hey, I mean, at least you'll be at the convention again through what you love, right? Exactly. They um, where where aren't they the guys that like set up the booth in the in the tabletop room with all the stuff? Yeah, uh, they do tabletop and stuff. It's great. Yeah, I and bought, sell games. I bought a. Uh, I bought My Hero Academia Monopoly from them. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Because because I guess I guess I'm a okay, I guess I'm a fan of My Hero, but I only watched episode 1 so far. I like how it looks. I think it looks cool. I would love to watch it, but like like <laughs> I just like I don't know. I just like, I got to like be in the mood to watch it and I just haven't had the mood I under- yet. I understand that, but also watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I got my mom to watch it and she loved it. Oh my god. Where she will only watch the dub though. So we're still waiting for season four because Hulu doesn't have the dub yet. So um DVD. But my mom my mom loves my hero and it's weird. And she calls me Deku now. It's weird. Yeah, but but like the how the you can buy it on DVD. They they sell the first like four season, the first three or four seasons on DVD, and they have uh, the movies on DVD too. Wait, they have Heroes Rising on DVD now. I believe it's on DVD now. <laughs> that's the first movie, right? No. Or that's the second movie. No, that's the second movie. I I believe it's on DVD now. <laughs> what? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go buy Heroes Rising now, because <laughs> um, that movie was so good. It was so good. Oh my god! Oh, if you are not a if you are not a Baku Deku stan after watching that movie, I don't understand how you are a person. Oh here no no here no here no here's um here's something that you're gonna free you're gonna go fangirly about um okay. So, um, so if Midwest actually happens and doesn't get canceled, I have signed up for two panels. My first panel is going to be my Cyber Time Bike pa- panel that I've been doing that I did twice already. But my other panel is going to be a anime family feud, and I'm going to have Homestuck <gasps> versus My Hero in the first one. <laughs> ah, that's so cool! And and I'm gonna and and I'm gonna and if I get a Todoroki and a Dave Strayer. In this panel, I'm gonna have them come up first, and they're gonna—they're just gonna stand there at the at the thing with their buttons or whatever. And I'm just gonna look at the Dave, and then I gotta look at the Todoroki, and then I'm just gonna look up and stare at the camera, and I'm just gonna go like, "Everyone's seeing this room right now, and everyone watching behind that camera right now, wherever you are watching this, you're leading over to your friend probably right now, and you're probably like." 
This is my ship. <laughs> I ship it. I haven't seen Homestuck, but I ship it. No, no, no. You know Todoroki, right? He's the badass of his of the fandom, and then Dave Strider is the badass yep. of his fandom. So, oh, I see. Yeah, so Shiro, Dave Strider. That's the ship that everyone probably wants right now. <laughs> yes. And so, like, so it's like, um, like, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> I've never been to Kitsune Con, but I, I know about, I heard about, because that's in Green Bay, but I've never been to it, and I don't think yeah. I, how is it like, how is Kitsune Con like? So, Kitsune Con is a smaller con than Dive Show, but I adore it. It's it's hosted at the KI Convention Center connected to the Hyatt in Green Bay. And it's a it has like really wide hallways. It only has four panel rooms and then the main room. And then for panels and things. So it has like the main programming and then it has four other panel rooms. So it can't host a ton of panels at a time, but they still have a bunch of stuff going on at once. And it's amazing and I absolutely adore Kitsune. I will always, like, rep for them so long as they keep it running similarly to how it is. Like, there are certain things I have issues with, but no matter what, you're always going to find something to nitpick about. But overall, I think Kitsune is amazing. I, um... And the staff you know really cares. Like, I am friends on Facebook with one of the people that runs it. And, um... There was a situation that happened with one of my friends, not last year, but the year before, um, and she she went off with an older guy, and she was a minor, and it was bad, but the staff was super helpful and able to help us out and made sure she was safe, made sure we were safe, and... The staff really cares at Kitsune, and you can tell, and I I will always rep Kitsune. Even if I have certain issues with, like, panels and stuff, I, I'll always rep them. I, um, I know, I know you're, I know you're not a wrestling fan at all, but when I saw that place for the first time, like, I looked up photos of that convention center, because, because I was interested in what it looked like, um, <laughs> when I first saw it, I, I I know you're not going to get this at all, but I feel like this this place would be the perfect venue for if ECW were to run a show out of Green Bay would be here. <laughs> okay. Because because they because they used to do bingo halls and convention centers and civic centers and little places like that, and they and and I don't know. I was like, this is this place is perfect for that. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> the Hyatt's really nice. Yeah, that's it. That's not what I heard until right now. <laughs> no, but that. But I'm... what's that? The elevators are really slow there. <laughs> and last year, I dressed up as a uh, cube, and I had the contracts with me. Which was sign this contract, make a wish, become a magical girl, whatever. Yeah. Um, and I hung one up by the elevators, wishing for the elevators to go faster. Yeah. It it became a joke on the Facebook group for Kitsune, people questioning who did it. And I was just like, I'm not going to admit that this was me. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't go like, fierce floor, sicky floor. <laughs> you see, I wish it was that fast. <laughs> no, but does, it, does the elevator like like have like a that one of those like announcers that goes like peace floor? No, it just has dings. But they're glass elevators. That's cool. It's literally faster to take the stairs, though. Is it like um? Is it like the uh, what's gonna call it um? The Hyatt in Rosemont, where they do Midwest. I have no idea. I've never been to Midwest. 
Have you been to the count out delete? <laughs> nope. Oh, dude, you're missing out. Dude, I've, dude, I am 19 years old, turning 20 this year. I am a college student, and I only got my car last August. I have not had time nor money to go to conventions yet. No, that's fine. The first, the first real convention I ever went to was Kitsune Con when I was seventeen. My parents were not supportive of me going to conventions. Um, my my first so. con- no, my first convention was two thousand fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I I don't even go to that convention anymore though. The the one I um, the one I uh, what you call it, the one I first went to, because. Yeah. Because it it was too corporate for me, honestly. Wizard World was too corporate oh. for me. <laughs> Is that like done through Wizards of the Coast? No, I no. They're, I think they're their own company. I think there's a oh. Wizard World, and they they and they're a convent. Like they have like a Chicago one, a Wisconsin one. They like like they like like they're like Wizard World's its own thing, and they travel around, but. I just like I didn't really like it that much. I mean, like it wasn't my. I mean, I mean, I didn't like. I wasn't mean, your cup of tea? Yeah, it wasn't my cup of tea. It. I went to and my second convention I ever went to was Anime Midwest 2016, <laughs> and that one was really fun. But the only reason I went there was because there was someone I liked that was there, and and that was just, that was my initiative to even going in the first place. So. So I'm glad I went anyway because I like the convention now and I've been going ever since. But, but that reason, that reason why I first went, it's no longer my reason anymore. <laughs> Yay! Um, but I've been going to Am- yeah, but since 2016, uh, Anime Midwest has been like my streak that I've been trying to not break. <laughs> <laughs> Same, same with, uh, same with C two E two. A streak I'm trying. I've heard C two E two is good. Yeah, I it... just haven't gone. No, it's fine. If you go, if you go next, if you go uh, next year, it'll be the twelfth year. So C two E two twelve. I kind of want to go to like what on the east coast or the west coast, just so I can leave the midwest for the first time ever yeah that'd be that'd be actually pretty cool like like colossal con you think yeah i've heard katsu con is really cool I isn't heard... that like in virginia or something no i'm talking about colossal con uh the the one that has at the art <laughs> oh i have not heard of that one i don't think yeah there there's yeah in ohio uh, at the Kalahari in Ohio, they have a um, a con- convention called Colossal Con. That's where all the famous cosplayers go. I don't like using that wording, <laughs> but famous cosplayers are. And and they have one in Ohio, and they have one on the East Coast called Colossal Con East, which happens at the Kalahari, um, I believe, in New York. I forget, but but. Uh, it happens over there, and that one is just as big. Um, there's how they, ma- what's that? I was just saying, cool. And then there's how they Matsuri, which is in Florida, and that's like the week before Christmas, and it's a Christmas slash anime mixture convention. Oh yeah, I saw so many TikToks about that. It looked so fun. I want it. I wanted to be there so bad. <laughs> I want to go there because it's Christmas in anime convention. Like. <laughs> I would literally make my Deku wig and just stick it full of ornaments and be like, "I'm a Christmas tree." No, 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 Dean. No, I don't know who the who the character's name is that has like the pink wig and the horn and the yellow horns coming out of her head. But uh, Nina Ashido. Yeah, yeah, you should do her, but set the change the horns to candy canes. <gasps> oh, I love that. <laughs> I need to learn how to spray paint my skin now. <laughs> It's like you don't need spray paint; you just need snazaroo. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> or no, not sna- well, not sna- snazaroo is water based. I would I would choose mefron because mefron is basically like a 
like a stick of paint and you just put it on yourself and you use a use like a, a makeup sponge or whatever and you just rub it on your face okay that sounds awesome yeah so so get uh, i don't know what her skin color is but get that color of mephron it's pink it is bright pink then to get bright pink mephron and just <laughs> go to town woman all over your face. <laughs> uh, if I ever do that, I don't think I'd be comfortable enough to put it on any other parts of my body other than my face. So it'd be like really awkward in pictures. I'd just be like, avoid the face. <laughs> avoid everything other than the face. All right, you can get arm from if you don't want to like paint every other part for the arms. You can do like the arm socks or whatever. Just like that is smart. And then I, I, I haven't really seen the character, so like, so like I know that there's the face, the arms. I don't know about the legs. Um. Did, does she? Does she have? Is she? Is she have uh, like open legs where you gotta paint your legs? What? Like, does she wear pants? <laughs> um. It depends on which version you're doing. Well, just choose a version where she's wearing pants. <laughs> yes. So you can avoid that, and then, and then, boom, there's your boy, <laughs> or your girl, or whatever you like to call it. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I did I painted my face for the very first time uh, back at Kano Delete when I was being Equus for the first time. My profile picture. <laughs> nice. My gray up job sucked, but I tried. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I was just uh Okay. I was just um coughing because um I I held my breath for too long. <laughs> Valid. So, um Are you into are you in nostalgia things like like I am, like nostalgic things? Kind of. I don't really know what you mean by that. Like, does Windows 95 have any relevance to you? Oh, yeah. Um, Windows... Well, not 95. 98. Um, when I was younger, I used to have the... Like, one of the computers in my room. It was Windows 98. And, oh my god, that computer was the most annoying thing sometimes. Because my parents would do the taxes on it for, like, years... And this computer would just randomly break, and when you try to turn it on, it would make this horrible squealing noise, like, for hours on end, and it was in my bedroom, and I was, like, 10, and I was like, I hate this so much. That was, that. that's how it was like for me for the longest time. My, um, my parents had to stick the computer in me and my brother's room for for a long time because when we moved into our second apartment that we lived in our, the computer was in our room and so like so like if they ever had to use it at any time of the day or night they like even if we were like sleeping they would just like if they had to use it they came they just came to our room and started using it oh i hate that and and like that and I don't know if you remember the themes. I don't know if 98 had this theme, but remember the mystery theme? <laughs> Wait. I can I think I, so. I can send you a photo if you don't if you forgot what it looks like. <laughs> okay. It's a it was basically it looked like a li- it looks like somebody's like library or something. But except it was um <gasps> I remember I just googled it. Oh my god, I remember that. Oh, you, oh, you googled what I was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Let, yeah. Oh, I rem- There's a painting of the guy in the on top of the fireplace. <laughs> yeah. That scared the hell out of me when I was little. <laughs> oh. Like, 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 like I couldn't, like, I didn't want to be near the computer when I was on there. I didn't want to be anywhere near anything when that was on there. <laughs> it, in the screensaver, don't even get me started. I was like, okay, I'm out. <laughs> oh, because the screensaver look was 
like the screensaver was so scary and so on point of being scary that I was like, I still get scared of it today. <laughs> oh. You see, we always had like that ocean one on it because my sister loved the ocean and I was like, fish are cool. So we always had that one. My favorite, what was my favorite fiend? Well, that one I remember the most because I was scared of it. But um, the one I, the one I actually, f- oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that one. But um, the I'm trying to I'm trying to remember what was my favorite fiend though. I like the the seven the one the seventies one they had on there though. It's called seven uh, the seventies USA theme. It was basically just a tie dye picture of tie dye and it and they had uh they had like uh. Flat, they had like flowers as like the loading thing, and they had like uh, and it was like peace out, dude, and all that stuff. <laughs> and and they had they had the they had like I think it was like Ronald Reagan saying like, like like doing like a countdown when the computer booted up, and it. And it Wait, seriously? Yeah, it was like like five, four, three, two. <laughs> what? Like, like it was like it was like some kind of like it was kind of, it was sort of like some kind of like because I think in the seventies that's when like the rocket like a rocket went off in the space, huh. and like um and they and they had the countdown as the as the startups noise and then the shutdown noise was just a was just a beer like a strum on a guitar because you know the seventies, <laughs> yeah. But, but I mean like it was Windows ninety five has more. To me, the ninety eight because I because I grew up on ninety five. I don't think I ever used ninety eight unless I forget if I did. But the ones I am, I have memories on the most are ninety five in Millennium Edition, and then after Millennium Edition was XP for me because I didn't, I don't because I don't think I ever used two thousand. Um. So so I think it was ninety five to ninety. 95, the Millennium Edition, the XP. All right. Yeah. <laughs> XP sucked, though. <laughs> Let's just be honest. <laughs> I grew up on XP because we had a laptop with it. So, like, I knew how to use it, like, super well. So when I got to Windows 7, I was like, I hate this. But now it's like... I hate Windows 10 and I want Windows 7 on everything, but I know that's not applicable, so I don't. No, Windows Windows 10 actually reminds me a lot of Windows 95 in a way. I mean, I, I, I when I first heard about Windows 10, it confused the hell out of me, but now that I have it and now that I know how to use it, it's just like now, now it reminds me of like Windows 7, Windows 95, you know, all those now. It's not like that for you? I guess. I don't know. I mean, uh, what? I mean, out of all the processors that that Windows have ever made, what is your favorite processors? Out of all of them. Uh, I don't know. I uh, I have nostalgia for Windows Seven and XP. So. I. I, Windows I, 7 is what we always used on school computers, other than in middle school when we used XP. I don't know why they only had XP. I never I never did you ever use Windows 8 or was it or was it XP Street to 10? It was Windows uh, 8. We had Windows 8 at home. It's just at school we had 7. Windows, I, I think Windows Seven was my was my processor on my old computer before I switched to my new computer I have now, and um, I never used Windows Eight, so I didn't know how it was like. I only know Windows Ten how that's like, and what I know about Windows Ten is that it's basically Windows Eight, but except it's better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Windows Windows Eight sucked. That's what I heard. <laughs> But but what I hate about Windows 10 is that sometimes it thinks it's a touch screen. <laughs> oh yeah. And my computer screen. If you don't have a 
touch screen it's kind of sucky i mean like it's because well because it's kind of like a, a the computer thinks it's kind of like a phone at the same time like you know with this with the dot with the swiping back and forth and whatever yeah, Windows tried to do their Windows phone, and they tried to adapt everything so it was mobile at first, but it just doesn't work like that for computer systems, and uh, they messed up on that. Yeah, at that, least in my opinion, they don't do the, they don't do a phone anymore, right? I don't think they do. They might. One second, I'm gonna Google that. Because I think they, I think they stopped making their phone after they fi- figured out it, it. It was a complete failure. As of January 9th, twenty twenty, they no longer make updates, and they will no longer make Windows phones. So, <laughs> the the day the day the phone the the phone innovation died. <laughs> um. So like, <clears throat> so like, have you ever been to my point before? You know, Stevens Point. <laughs> I have been to Stevens Point before. One of my cousins goes to school there. Well, how do you like my point? <laughs> eh? That pun. Stevens Point is okay. I haven't been there much, but it, it's it's okay. It's a place i don't know <laughs> yeah, it's not just a place it's like like there's just so much to do there i mean look at all the stuff i made no i'm kidding <laughs> i i don't know everything seems impressive to me because i'm from a really small town where it is um ice cream shop that's closed other than in summer church church park where drug deals happen park where drug deals happen park behind a church mcdonald's quick trip Family Dollar, bar, bar, restaurant and bar, restaurant and bar. That's it. That's what we... Oh, and grocery store. Your pinnacle, a small town. (laughs) Oh, and we have a post office. But other than that, we got nothing. We used to have a laundromat, but that disappeared. Because nobody went to it. Yeah, but you guys don't... You guys don't have Shopco anymore, right? No, ShopGo is no longer a thing. Rest in peace, ShopGo. What you guys have? What you guys have now that that's not ShopGo anymore? Then. Uh, we got Walmart. We got Target. Um, <laughs> rip ShopGo. Rip ShopGo was like really good when I was younger. ShopGo was like awesome, but. Shopgo went under, and I personally believe Shopgo went under because they started raising their prices. And whenever there was a sale on something at Shopgo, if you had went there the week prior, it was the same price as it would be for the sale price. So like they would up the prices when they put it on sale. So when it, you get the discount, it's the same price anyway. Because I reason i believe they went under because even though i don't live in wisconsin i have a shop co memory <laughs> um, i i, I went... used to get my glasses there and it sucked because it's like uh i like their glasses no you you said i'm muffled for some reason oh sorry is that better yeah but i you... accidentally like had my um microphone away from my face for a minute no, it's all right, but yeah, I mean, like, I mean, like, I um, no, my shop code memory it's actually, uh, it's actually like a couple years ago because we went there because um, I forgot what we went there for. I think we went there to get like to get some like snacks or whatever, and I think someone needed a belt, so we went to Shopco, and it kind of reminded me of just like you know, a Kmart, but smaller and I was like Shopko was Kmart but better also rest in peace Kmart dear god we also lost that we lost that one prior to Shopko I know we 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 only have one Kmart open by my house and that one's starting to close too <laughs> you have a Kmart by your house yet oh my god I'm jealous 
I miss Kmart. No, no, I remember going into Kmart when I was little and they had GameCubes on display and I would go in and I would play like Wind Waker's first level like on repeat until my parents were done shopping. Or I would go buy their bouncy balls and I would just like goof off and annoy my parents because I would break stuff and not admit to it. Well, I do. I would admit to it. I, I just wouldn't admit it to my parents and then they would be like, Aaron, what? did you do and i was like I, I broke a thing and i took it to an employee and they didn't make me pay for it because i'm a kid <laughs> but no i mean like um no i mean the what the one that the kmart that was owned by my house i live by now that one closed like a long time ago but there's one that there's one like a couple towns away from me um that's still open but they're but they're starting to they're starting to go out of business so when that one closes there's not going to be any kmarts left around me anymore Oh, I love Kmart. I love Kmart. Kmart was like a good place. Like, I don't know. I have just nostalgic memories of it because um, it closed when I was like eleven, I think, in the area for me. Yeah, if, so. if it, it closed. It started liquidating like years ago, and they're still going one by one doing the pickings. I, I like Sears too. Sears was another one I loved. Sears, I miss Sears. Oh, uh, I was, oh, uh, I was so mad when Sears went out of business. Yeah, that, I mean, like, that, funny enough, I shopped there so much that like I went there to go get a uh, a new like, do you know like those uh, it's not a jacket, but like, do you know like those things you just put over your clothes? It's like a jacket, but it's not really a jacket. Sweater. No, it's like a, it's like a, it's like an over, it's like a cardigan. No, it's 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 kind of, it's it's kind of like a, it's like it's kind of like a, just an over thing, like an like it looks like it like it's just, it's like an I don't know how to explain it. Overcoat. Yeah, I guess you can call it that. Um, it was camouflage and it had buns on the shoulder. Wait, and, flannel. Yeah, it was like a flannel, but except it wasn't flannel. Like it was, it was, it wasn't like a flannel material. It was kind of like, you know, fabric. I understand. I still call them flannel. But yeah, mine. I got a camouflage one, and it has buns on the shoulder. But the first one I got was too small. <laughs> you know, it was extra. Right. You know, it was extra large, and that's my size. Um. But then, but then I. Uh, what I did was I went back to Sears like immediately after that, and I happened to have enough points on my card for me to get a new one for completely free. Nice. And so I, it's because because when I put in my phone number for my for my rewards, they said, "Oh, you can get it for free. You have that many points." I was like, "Cool!" And so I get, so I used my points. And I got it for free. <laughs> That's awesome. And I still have it to this day, and I haven't worn it in a long time, but I have it. <laughs> Before Sears went out of business, one of the last times I went there, I got to buy a birthday outfit because I it was my birthday and I was going out to dinner with my sister and I hadn't brought anything that was formal enough for the place that she wanted to take me. So my mom was like, we'll go to Sears and we'll get you a nice outfit. So I ended up just buying a pair of black pants and a nice looking t-shirt. And that was like one of the last times I ever went to Sears. But I still have that. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, that, well I mean, at least you went there for a, for a nicer memory. <laughs> yeah. But, um, what's it called? Uh, when is your birthday? July 5th. Oh, yeah. You're right after the 4th of July, so... Woo, I know. Part, I was always called my mom's firecracker baby because I was born at, like, 7 a.m. or something. And my mom always makes a joke how I should have been born on the 4th of July. That's just, like, probably. <laughs> Do you be the most patriotic baby of the year? I would literally dress up when I was younger in red, white, and blue all the time. Cause, 
and I would, I always was like super diehard about politics and things for a long time because I was like, born on the 5th of July, I need to be a patriot. And I'm just, I just look back and I'm like, what, 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 what was I doing? No, they, no, this is funny. Uh, oh, this is funny. So there's a, you know, so there's this pay per view, this wrestling pay per view back in the day called the Great American Bash, and it would have been so that would be so funny. Like that should be the name of your birthday, just the Great, just Great American Bash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, like, yeah, it's your birthday. Ooh. My birth, no, my... last year. What's that? When is your birthday? September first. Oh, you always had to go to school on your birthday. No. Yeah, that and and it's just so weird because, like, you know, I was born I, the the first day of the month. I had my golden birthday was like literally when I turned one. <laughs> yeah. Both my sisters have like teen teen birthdays, like nineteen and seventeen, and I'm just like. Oh come on! They got really cool like stuff on their golden birthdays because like golden birthday, and you're like old enough to appreciate it. And when I was five, I got five golden one dollar coins, and that was it. So I'm just like, you you do super cool stuff for my siblings because it's their golden birthday, <laughs> and you couldn't pretend for me. No, I mean like it's funny. Half like half of my friends, like there's. Like I like it was so weird. Like half of my friends' birthdays are in September. Like I'm on the first. I have another friend who's on the second. Um, I one my my other friends on the eleventh, and my other, and I have another friend who's on the 29th, and I think I have another one who's on the twenty second. <laughs> That's so weird. Yeah, I was like, I was like September's a crazy month for birthdays. <laughs> well, it's like Christmas, but at the start of school. <laughs> oh man I mean no, it was thinking about sharing birthdays and sharing birthday months um, when I was growing up I was in the same grade as a girl who had the same birthday as me her name was Rachel and I just think about that sometimes because we were like totally different people but we shared the same birthday and we would always like we still do. We message each other happy birthday every time. But you and guys... it would always be a fun thing when the teachers were like, line up by your birthday. And me and Rachel would just stand next to each other like, who do you want in which position? Because we were both born on the same day. And they would just be like, wait, what? And we were just like, haha, we're born on the same day. <laughs> so you guys never got along, but you guys were, but no, you guys never really got along, but you got, because of the shared birthday, you guys were like, you're cool. Kind of. Uh, it wasn't that we didn't really get along. It was just that we ran in different circles. Like, I was, like, like she was banned and, like, quiet. And I was also quiet, but, like, I didn't have friends. <laughs> so, 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 so it was like she did her own thing, you did your own thing, but it's just, like, somehow it like, connected somehow? Yeah. Like... It was one of those things where it's like, we don't really talk much outside of school, but we have this thing that connects us, so that's cool. It was probably, it was probably just because of the same birthday thing. It was just like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, how How is growing up in Wisconsin, like, compared to, like, growing up here, in, like, in Illinois and, like, the suburbs and, you know? I don't know. I grew up in a small town. Everyone's freaking small town stereotypes are accurate um i don't know Did you, I, I don't even know how to describe it <laughs> have, have you have you ever been to mars cheese castle i have no idea what that is it's an oshkosh wisconsin <laughs> uh i never really went to oshkosh growing up no no not, not oshkosh um, uh kenosha it's literally near the Illinois Wisconsin border. <laughs> no. 
Uh, my family didn't really do much when I was growing up, to be honest. The first time I got to, like, Lake Michigan was when I was 12. And I lived, like, 30 minutes from Lake Michigan. <laughs> I mean, but did you like it? Oh, I love Lake Michigan. I love going there. It's one of my favorite places to be. But I don't know. I don't. My family is weird. Um, <laughs> did um, do you um, uh, what should we call it? Um, what am I trying to say? Do you guys have comic stores up there where you sell like comic books and whatever, or is that like a very far and in between thing up there? It's kind of far and in between, but there's Powers Comics in Green Bay. They're pretty cool. I like the people that work there. Yeah, because because we have because we have a couple down here, but like like we have so, we have like I think a lot down here. But like I was thinking, like how I never asked, like how's the Wisconsin comic book scene like? <laughs> well, growing up, I was friends with a family that was super into comics and stuff. Um, but outside of that, it wasn't like. I don't know. I grew up in a small town. You get people that are like really into their thing and then nobody else is into that because it's. So I don't know. So I'm, guess, I'm guessing you live like really close to Green Bay because you go to Green Bay malls and stores and as you will. Um, My mom grew up in Green Bay, so my relatives all live in that general area so if we ever went someplace it was usually to green bay so yeah and i live closer to green bay than any other major place um the closest ones for me are like manitowoc and then green bay so but green bay is slightly closer for me Mm -hmm. so Don't, don't tell me you're a packers fan I don't really follow football. My sister's a diehard Packers fan, though. Like, oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I, I'm i a marketing student at my college, and I went to the Packers Green and Gold Career Day about a year ago, it was, in March. And it was really interesting, but also they marketed it really badly, and I'm just like... I came here to learn about your marketing and you marketed this wrong. Great. Uh, they marketed it to be like towards high schoolers, but it was all about like internships and stuff. And I'm just like, why wouldn't you market this towards college students? What the heck are you doing? <laughs> so there were only two colleges there and the rest of the people were high schoolers. And I'm just like, well, this is really cool because I'm learning a lot, but also I'm surrounded by high schoolers and I hate this. <laughs> Yeah, they're, no, they're probably they're probably just like because football. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's probably their reason. Um, yeah, but it was really interesting. And then in January, I went to the Bucks Sports Management Night, and I got to see a Bucks game. So that one was cooler. But I learned like next to nothing, to be honest, because um, the first person there that talked to us talked for about two hours, and he talked about his own career and his own experiences and i'm just like okay but i want to learn about the bucks and how this worked so not really interested in how you became a person working here to be honest um i just want to know how you do stuff and then we were supposed to get to ask questions about how they do stuff but the person for marketing didn't come till the last like 15 minutes of that breakout session so we were just sitting there waiting for them and we were listening to like lawyers and sponsorship people for a while and then also their HR person. And then when their marketing person did show up and we went into the breakout sessions, they like only allowed like four people to ask questions and I had my hand raised for like the entire thing. And I was, I completely forgot my question by the time he got to me. So I was just, I asked some generic question about like, do you believe a four-year degree is worthwhile when I'm learning the same skill sets that you're describing at a two-year degree? And he's just like, well, it looks good on a resume. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm fine. And so then it was super boring. And then we went to dinner and then we went and saw the Bucks game. And I would never do that again, except for the fact that the ticket was $43. 
and I got a free bus ride out of it down there through school, and I got to see a Bucks game for forty three dollars. So, I uh, I uh, what you gonna call it? Um, I uh, what am I trying to say? Um, the you, did you did you actually like did you actually like um did did you actually like go and like uh see it at the new arena or is this be or is this before the new it arena? It was at the new arena. Uh it was this January. Like literally on the thirty first of January this year. I think you posted photos of that on your Twitter, I think. I did. Did um what how's I've never been to the festive form because I I not I haven't even been inside the Bradley Center when I was still around, but like same i have only been to that location once that one time it's really cool and the tour was pretty epic honestly but um it's like over half of it is made the entire experience for rich people and you can tell is the festive form a nicer arena than the bradley center never went to the bradley center i would not know according to the people i was with it was a lot nicer well, I mean, it looks. It looks. It, I mean, from the outside, the Bra- the festive form looks a lot sleeker and nicer, and the Bradley Center looked like just looked Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It looks cool, and they have like a lot of cool stuff inside of it. It just seems excessive a little bit. Um, to... I'd hate to have been a citizen in Milwaukee and pay taxes, and that's what they came up with. But um, yeah. But I haven't been to Milwaukee in forever. I mean, like... I was going to go to school in Milwaukee, to UW-Milwaukee, and I was going to go for Japanese because I had no idea what I was doing with my life. And then my sister gave me a wake-up call of, you can't afford this. And I was like, you right, though. And, yep, now I'm going to school in Green Bay at a technical college. Yay. Does, um... So like so like what so do you want to like be like are you studying to be like the social media person of or the or the advertising or whatever person for Quick Trip? <laughs> if they'd hire me, um, to be that, I'd go for it. I my career goals are this: I would absolutely love to do something in my field. I'd absolutely love to do something with social media marketing specifically. But so long as I have a job that I at least enjoy a little bit and I do not want to die every day after going to it um, and I make enough money where I can move out on my own, I will be content. Uh, That's my goals in life. (laughs) I feel like that's an appropriate goal to have at the age of 19. Yeah, because um, I went to school for broadcasting. (laughs) And I went to I went to a school called the Illinois Center for Broadcasting, and basically pretty much that's awesome. Yeah, they, they I didn't have I didn't have to learn. They, they didn't teach me about paper or anything. Like we literally touched all the equipment and learned by touching the equipment. And it was a one year thing, and I did all that, and I you know I graduated. I got I got my certificate for it, and my certificate for being uh for being perfect attendance because I didn't miss a day there. Um, and if I didn't miss one day in my freshman year of high school, I would have got perfect attendance in high school as well. But <laughs> um, Oh, I got sick so much in high school. I, like, missed, like, two full weeks my senior year, I think it was. I would have never gone gotten- but um, but then after I graduated broadcasting school, that's when I started working at my job. And then after, um, then, you know, in 2014, and in that same year, I started my first podcast I ever did. That's awesome. Yeah, it was called Adventure Time, guys, and it's not, and it's pra- it's practically gone now at this point. <laughs> Aww. And that's when I moved on to that's... do. What's that? Oh, I was just saying that sucks. Yeah, then I moved on to do this Cyber Time Bite, and then I went on to move on to do um, uh, In the Serpent's Pit with Serpent's Breakdown, which is part of the Cyber Time Bite Network, which is a which is a a thing where I, where I let people have the 
do their own podcast and then give and I give them a home to do to do their thing. That's awesome. So yeah. <laughs> uh and since I'm like and since I'm the only one that like does everything for Cyber Time Bite, I do I literally do the advertising. Uh the if there's a marketing part of my podcast, that too. Like I do everything. <laughs> Dude, that's cool. So if you so if you're so being a student of your game, if you ever have any questions about how I do things, you can ask me and I can give you this the answer that you might want. <laughs> hey. Um do you like go in depth about what you how you market and things? Like why you do what you do? Do you like have a social media plan or a strategy or like a marketing strategy at all? What for my stuff? Yeah. Um e- well, for my for my uh, Facebook, I mean, I I mean, like I, I try to post. I, I don't post every day, but every time I upload an episode, I post and I go like, this is um, like this is like like here's today's episode. Uh, enjoy. It. I mean, like like I know I know it's I know when I give you my answers, it's not going to be what, like these in depth answers that you might would have wanted, but um. No, that's fine. Um, I was just wondering if once Corona time is, would like to um, do a chat sort of like this, probably over Discord, with my American Marketing Association Club. Um, we pretty much have guest speakers come and talk to us about what they do, um, how they market things, what their strategies are with, when it comes to marketing, etc., is I would love to. It's awesome. It's just like I don't Well Yeah. No, what were you gonna say? I'm sorry. Oh sorry if that sounded weird. It's just um club that I'm in on campus. Um I'm technically the secretary for it. Um it's called the American Marketing Association and we have a collegiate chapter and it's pretty much all we do is just have people talk about what they do for marketing there and or we just try to do service learning products related to it the thing is though it's like i like like i'm not like like i know that you're like a major in the in the marketing world and like you know like numbers and how to crunch them and all that but like (laughs) for me it's just like oh i have the cyber time by facebook and i have my own twitter and i have all this (laughs) it's I, like, I no, don't... that's awesome. You're actually doing it. You're actually in the real world experiencing it. And we just want to, like, we don't care if you're, like, super good at it or not. We just want to know what you're doing and how you're doing it and why you do what you do. That's sort of just the whole gist of it when we have people come in. Oh, like, so... we had a person come in that used to go to our school and now works for Door County, Door County Winery and also Captain's Walk Winery. And she talked about, like, how she runs their Facebook page, why they do what they do for their marketing, etc. And that's it. And then just chit-chat with us, get to know us, like, have conversation, just chit-chat. It's pretty much all it is. Yeah, I would love to. Uh, if you, if, I mean, like, I mean, can I, like, explain, like, my whole story about how, where I started and how I got here? And all that too. We would, we would love that. <laughs> Literally love that. Because I, because to be honest with you, I gotta do that same exact thing in two weeks. So I would love to do it again. <laughs> awesome. Unless, unless you, unless you, unless you guys are planning on doing it over Discord and Skype during the quarantine, and you guys are just gonna do big group chat, and I, you want me just to speak to all of you that way? We are doing that technically right now but we're not really doing anything with like people interviewing and stuff it's just um it's just us updating each other on how we're doing um once the quarantine is over i'd like message you and be like hey here's the time frame for when we meet would you be down blah 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 yeah. <laughs> like yeah <laughs> 
But yeah. we're we're a super professional club, totally. No, we, we have fun. We yeah. have fun. Yeah, I'd, I'd be down. I'd, I'd love to speak to your class and be like, "Hey, what's up, guys?" You know. Yeah. If I if if I if I could, I would I would bring if I was there in person, I would bring all I would bring a bunch of sporks and tie my business card to it and throw a bunch of sporks to all of y'all. I mean, if you want to mail me them, I can do it for you. <laughs> mail the spork. <laughs> I have a P.O. box. <laughs> oh, no. This is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't... That would be dangerous. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, next time I go to a convention and I do, and I have my next panel and I'm confirmed for it, I'm getting a bunch of sporks, I am tying my business cards to them, and everyone's getting a spork. <laughs> That's awesome. Dude, you should, like, try to find a custom website and, like, design your business card to be a spork. I already have, I already have cards, though. <laughs> I don't know how I can make, I don't know how I can make a business card spork. <laughs> um, you put your website name or and or social media handles on the handle of the spork and then put your logo on the spoon of the spork <laughs> this is what i think of as a marketing student <laughs> the, the the whole sport the whole sport for me in the first place was supposed to be a ploy for me to get my podcast out there <laughs> perfect That was my original intention anyway with the spork. <laughs> I was going to, because, because, um, the reason why the spork came to my life because of this is because I wanted, um, whatchamacallit, what am I trying to say? I wanted something to, to like, be like my thing. Like, like, you know how there's, um, the, what am I trying to say? Do you know how, um. I'm trying to relate to. I'm trying to relate to something. Oh, do you know how there? Do you know how in Ed and Eddie how there's the kid in his wood, in his wood board? What? Remember Ed, Ed and Eddie? No. Well, I know what Ed, Ed and Eddie is. I just don't. I never watched it. Oh, oh okay. Let's see. Um. I am too young for that one. No, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Trying to make a good uh um oh do you know how oh uh, do you know how in, in Voltron how there's the li- uh, how there's like the paladins the paladins and the lions yes so the spork it um, for me it's kind of like it's kind of like that it's kind of like there's me and then there's a spork that's awesome <laughs> I love that like 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 I treat like like I treat the spork the like. Sp- what? The spork is a brand is part of your brand. It is a representation of your brand. Yeah, like like I I, I, I some when I'm in front of my friends, I'm like, hey, do you sure you want to touch this? You don't know how much power you're welding when you're holding this right now. <laughs> <laughs> like I knighted my friend with the spork. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> I love that. You want me to knight you with the spork? I can. Kind of. <laughs> my one friend won't do it because my friend's already knighted by a real sword, but still. <laughs> Wait, what? No, not for real, real knighted, but just, you know, like, knighted, uh, knighted by, a fr- by her other friend. <laughs> or her girlfriend. <laughs> with a sword. But, oh my god. But the spork, when you get knighted by it, you're the boy. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> like Anthony Curtis. Like Anthony Curtis. The boy. <laughs> oh no. 
Oh no. <laughs> this is too good. This is too good. I don't even know how to respond anymore. <laughs> well, you've been going for an hour and eighteen minutes. Wait, seriously? That's what my program oh. says. And that's what and that's what the, the whole issue of my computer shutting down. <laughs> Dang. So when I cut that out, it'd probably be like a an hour and maybe twenty if we go that long. <laughs> oh man. It's just been fun chatting. Yeah, I mean this is the I mean well I mean this has been the first time me and you have spoken since episode sixty six. I think it was, yeah. Woo! Did I say was it sixty six I said? I thought it was like eighty six. Oh it, no, not sixty six. It was uh now I gotta find it again. <laughs> see, Steven, see when you don't do your research, this is what happens to you. Yeah, I know, Brian. <laughs> eighty. Yeah, no, eighty I meant. <laughs> we haven't spoke since episode eighty in this it and now it, this is just <laughs> isn't it 94 yeah this is episode 94 and the last time you was on it was episode 80 so it's been a while <laughs> yeah because because at because after your episode it was the daisho con uh post con episode <laughs> yeah and um and that was fun because uh, it, I just I just got three randoms off the Daisho Con Con Goers page, and we just did a podcast talking about Daisho. <laughs> nice. And yeah, that was that was fun and stuff. I, but I think for this podcast, for an hour and what let's make it twenty, fifty three, fifty four, fifty five, fifty six, <laughs> fifty seven, fifty eight, fifty nine, one twenty. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I think this is a good spot to end this podcast. Probably. Oh, God. Well, I want to thank everyone for listening to Cyber Time by episode 94. Woo! Next episode will be episode 95, and I can be like, I should should have someone from Windows on my podcast. Yes. Or Microsoft and be like, hey, do you remember Windows 95? (laughs) Hey, Bill Gates. Yeah, like, hey, Bill. (laughs) Hey, Bill, you want to come on my podcast? Yeah, sure. What up, man? (laughs) You never know. He might say yes. But he's Bill freaking Gates. (laughs) He might say yes. Well, I mean, I came close to having the last ever ringmaster of the Ringling Brothers on my podcast. Almost. Dude, that's awesome. That would have been awesome. Uh hopefully that happens sometime down the road, down the line. But um You can find me on Facebook at CyberTimebite. Follow me on Twitter at Nostalgia Vamp. You clearly have seen my Twitter because you follow me on Twitter. <laughs> and Facebook too, but not my public page to the to the public. But <laughs> um <laughs> Unless you do like the Cyber Time Bite page, I believe you do. Um, I think I do. Here, no, here's uh, a. What's that? I don't go on Facebook too much. No, it's fine. Uh, oh, here's another marketing ploy. Um, <laughs> make sure to buy my merchandise at redbubble.com under Crash Steven Gear. Or even, you know, the Spork is the most powerful of them all with my Spork t shirt. That literally, that is awesome. And if you're not wearing it or buying it by now, we're like, what are you doing? Like, it's right there. Just, you know, spork it up with your friends. <laughs> Anywhere in the world. It can be in the middle of, it can be in the middle of Europe or the middle or, or in Southern California or somewhere in Canada that I don't even know where it is. You can spork it anywhere. With the sport t-shirt. Make sure to buy that crap. It's really good. <laughs> and uh, how about you? Where can people find uh, can find you again? 
All right. You can find me on Twitter at ERWeAreArts. You can find me on TikTok at ERWeAreArt. Um, you can find me on um, Instagram at BluebellAaron. And that's it. Yeah, make sure to follow her on TikTok because I'm not on TikTok. But if you follow her on TikTok, you could be like, this "You could be my ten thousand follow." I only need like six hundred more, and then we're at ten k. And then you get, and then you can be like, "Ooh, what am I? What am I? Follow, what did I do?" <laughs> you you you'll drag them in by the slope by your by your mental rope and be like, "What have I gotten myself into?" <laughs> if you like. If you like D and D memes, Deku, My Hero Academia, and just general cosplays, you'll have fun. Didn't you do a TikTok of you just being all the social medias? Oh, I did one that was making fun of Vine and Bite with um, TikTok. Um, I did it to the. Um, bring it on musical song that was becoming a meme for a while like my name is Skylar I rep the bucks with pride I did that but I put um, TikTok on and then I added Vine in and it was like um, my real name is Vine but I changed it to be bite because TikTok told me to. That's pretty much what the joke was, and I find it funny. Did do you have like uh, before we close up? Before we close it up, do you do you actually have cosplays of every social media: YouTube, Facebook, Twitter? Um, Not yet. I want to now. I never. Met- I have a, I have a plan. Like I have designs. For every social media, I just haven't done them because money and time. I I have I had never seen anyone in the world um cosplay social media social medias themselves <laughs> until I met you. <laughs> Woo! You're the first that I ever seen to do it. <laughs> you see, I s- I see people online like draw social medias as if they're people, but I've never seen anyone else cosplay them. And I'm like, but this is fun, though. You could be the first. You could be the landmark. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Oh, man. Well, for for this podcast, at least, thank you. This was a great time. I love having you on this podcast. Hopefully, we'll have you on for a for a third time, some ton of time down the line after probably I hit that hundred after I hit the hundred mark. <laughs> and for right now, I hope all of you out there in digital land have a fantastic day. Have a nice done. Have a nice one. <laughs>